Hello and welcome to Cecil.tv, Cecil Weekly. I'm your host, Rob Churnside, and it's the 30th of October, commonly known as Mischief Night, and Cecil.tv saw a lot of mischief this last past weekend, including the parade in Elkton, the Chesapeake City Ghost Walk, and then we went and, uh, on a more serious note, saw the drug take-back uh, event in Elkton. Tonight, we have with us our special guest, Dr. Paul Katz from Chesapeake Wellness. Welcome, Dr. Katz. Thank you, Rob. It's nice to be here. So, Paul, may I call you Paul? Sure, please do. Paul, tell uh, us a little bit about your practice, Chesapeake Wellness. So, Chesapeake Wellness uh, Centers uh, is a place where folks can come and get their uh, family practice needs taken care of. But what makes us unique is that we treat substance use disorder, Rob, and we also treat mental health disorders all under one roof which uh, is what we're trying to grow uh, in recognition of treating, as we well know, the substance use problem today. Um, and we're currently in two locations, one down in Elkton on Main Street and out in Cecilton currently. Right, I've seen, you're where Lions Pharmacy used to be, right yeah. next door. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. why I've seen the sign, I think, up front. Absolutely. So we, we want Mary Beth back. We'd like to have that pharmacy back open. Yeah, you had good soup too. Yeah. Um, so your practice is, is kind of holistic in that people who have substance abuse or mental health issues can receive maybe treatment for things that they might, due to those issues, have been neglecting. Absolutely, absolutely. I have not met anybody in my practice over the 19 years I've been in Cecilton who had a substance use disorder who had well-controlled diabetes or hypertension uh, or um, other issues, uh, physical issues. So uh, usually when we treat somebody for their substance use and their mental health diagnosis, miraculously their diabetes improves, so does their blood pressure and other health issues. Well, it makes sense. They start feeling better about themselves and Absolutely. taking them Absolutely. care of themselves. Uh, Absolutely. So it goes without saying, I guess, that when you, you look at your patients, you don't label them, really. Mm -hmm. You use what's the commonly accepted new language. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay, so, you know, substance use disorder is the new language out of uh, our, uh, what we call the DSM-5 crazy book about diagnoses uh, for psychiatric. Um, and uh, in order to destigmatize the whole idea of what addiction is about, uh, we want to use the model biopsychosocial spiritual disease and describe addiction as a physical disease that affects the brain, the brain as an organ. And uh, the, by definition, the addiction concept is, hey, I've got a uh, need to do a certain behavior or take a certain chemical uh, because it satisfies some need in me. And uh, I know that it's dangerous for me, but I do it anyway. So that's a pretty broad-based uh, idea of what addiction is. So if we approach um, the uh, disease of addiction like we do diabetes, um, we find that it's much more effective in terms of uh, acceptance by the person being treated as well as his family and the community that this person lives in. So, you know, in diabetes, for example, Rob, if somebody had diabetes, we uh, teach them how to eat, how to exercise, how to take their medications. Uh, and how to have proper communications. Well, that's no different when we're treating a person with a substance use disorder. Right, that makes sense. Behavioral stuff now. Behavioral stuff. You also sure. use medication to we assist. We sure do. Yeah, yeah. So the, the lingo today is medication-assisted treatment, uh, but it isn't by itself a, a, the total treatment, of course. Uh, we use various uh, chemicals available to decrease the craving for seeking uh, the opioid or the other substance that they might be craving, so they have more energy to get engaged in uh, the rest of their therapy. That makes good sense. I hope so. So you were also, I'm going to change gears a little bit, at the drug take back event this yeah. weekend. That was a great event, wasn't it? Uh, I, I heard it was. I was not there, but Cecil.tv was there. You, tell us a little bit about what you saw. All right, so uh, this was a coming together of all the various resources in the community to get to meet each other and understand what role each of us play and how to uh, kind of uh, weave together um, uh, a more collaborative approach. 
uh, to helping the folks who suffer from the disease of addiction. They also, that, uh, uh, I was Sunday, wasn't it? I believe it was Sunday or Saturday. Help me out Sunday, I think. So, or Saturday, it was Saturday. Saturday, is it? Yeah. So, uh, the idea was, you know, grandma and grandpa and mom and dad have a lot of drugs in their uh, medicine cabinet. Uh, this is primary where uh, the youth get uh, medications from mom and dad's uh, uh, cabinet. And so we wanted to have a way to uh, provide drug uh, drop-off boxes and then collect those substances to um, be further taken care of by the appropriate entities. Um, so that's, that was a major piece of this thing yes. on Saturday. Um, and I don't know how many pounds or tons of uh, materials they got, but it was impressive. You know. It was a, su a success, and I guess maybe doctors also learn not to prescribe so many drugs. Sure. Well, you know, uh, that's a very important goal of, um, well, the American Society of Addiction Medicine, of which uh, I'm a part of. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we put out to other physicians out there what is appropriate prescribing in the use of opioids and uh, how to uh, make sure we're doing a good job looking at some of the quality measures of what is good prescribing practices uh, and uh, what comes next. So, for example, uh, every time I write a prescription for an opioid, the next thought that comes to my mind is, well, what's the plan for getting this person off their opioid? Right. Uh, and that should be part and parcel to every provider out there today, uh, nationally and certainly locally. Good. That's a good plan. Well, this is such a, a deep and multifaceted topic and affects so many people and so many families in Cecil mm -hmm. County and the world. Right. We talked earlier and you told us about the many different hats you wear and some of your topics that you would like to discuss. Mm -hmm. We're hoping you come back again. I'd love to come back. And viewers out there, if you have a question, you can uh, ask Dr. Katz at Chesapeake Wellness Center. That's correct. correct. Yeah. Or you could ask Dr. Katz at info at cecil.tv. That's, that's our uh, electronic contact. And that way we'll know some of the questions that viewers would like Dr. Katz sure. to answer. Yeah. And, and deal there, with. There's, there's, Rob, there's no, um, there's no question except the one that isn't asked, and we would really like to be able to fill those questions. I can't really give you all medical advice on an individual basis, but any question that comes to mind to deal with either yourself having a substance use disorder or a family member or a friend, or maybe you're an employer that has an employee who has a substance use disorder, uh, we'd like to uh, facilitate giving the knowledge base to the folks so uh, we can help them and also improve our own situation that way also, you know, whether role or playing as a family member or a uh, spouse or a child of an addicted person, et cetera. Well, it's a countywide, worldwide problem. It certainly is. So uh, maybe I could just throw out one piece of information. I want people to understand that we are really playing very serious uh, issue here. We lost actually eight people in Cecil County uh, to the use of heroin. Um, uh, six of them heroin mixed with this uh, narcotic called fentanyl. And uh, two individuals died because of cocaine mixed with fentanyl. And those were deaths that didn't have to happen. No. You know, a waste of good potential uh, young men and women. And we hope to maybe be able to cut into that working together with one another uh, to improve, uh, you know, the quality of life that uh, we are all wanting to achieve. Thank you for all you do. Thank, Thank you, Thank you for Rob. being with us. We'll see you next time. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.